In this next segment, we're going to take a look at troubleshooting elastic audio. When things don't go well, you go ahead and quantize your part and it's not on the beat the way you thought. It's either because there are analysis marker problems or quantize setting problems. So let's take a look at both of those. For this example, I've got a rock piece that's got a couple of electric guitars that are just not quite locked in. I'd like them to be really tight. They're not bad, but could be better. Let's listen. Anyway, you get the idea. So you hear those first phrases. They're, they're definitely not together and not really locked in. They tend to rush quite a bit. So let's see what we can do. Typically, we'd select Tix mode and select a elastic audio algorithm like polyphonic. And then we'd select the part of the track we want to quantize, which is all. And then we'd pull up the quantize window, pick something like our 16th note that typically works, and hit, hit apply. I'm going to mute the other guitar track since we only just corrected one. So we're going to listen to the one and see how it sounds along with the track. Here we go. Ah, it's worse. It doesn't sound as good. So what made that go wrong? Well, a few things could make it go wrong. Uh, really three. One little one is that this song is not cut to a click or or at least a tempo that is synced to Pro Tools. So let's back up and undo what we just did and turn on the click and listen and make sure our click is going along with this track. I'm going to solo the part and I've got the click already solo saved up there. All right, so that does work. The click, at least this song, is at the right tempo for this part. But if, if we heard that click completely out of sync with this part, then we wouldn't blame Elastic Audio or our quantize settings. We'd blame uh, the fact that we're not synced up with the click. But we're synced up with the click, so that's good. Thing number two could be that they're, um, the, the part that we're trying to quantize isn't really a 16th note part. And I think that might be the case here. If you think about it, listen to the part. It's dunk, 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 dunk. You know, it's kind of an anticipated shuffling beat. It's either a swing or a triplet. It's not a straight one and two and three and four and kind of marching beat. So let's go ahead and um, try swing. We'll pick swing here and click on swing and see what happens. Oh, that's definitely not it. Again, it's making it worse. So we'll undo that and we'll try triplet. 16th triplet. It's pretty speedy, but there's some pretty speedy little parts in here, so maybe that's it. Let's listen. So we had a little, little bit of trouble there, but in general, the, the first couple of riffs were locked in the way they should be. So probably 16th tuplet is what we should have there. So I'm going to leave this track quantized to that level. And um, let's take a look at the other cause of trouble, which is analysis markers in the wrong place. To see those, I'm going to switch to warp view and zoom in a little bit so you can see them with me. We'll go back to the beginning of the song and see where we have trouble. Something that's helpful to do is to put a known good track right above or below the track you're trying to quantize to, and then maybe some way to see the grid. So let's switch to grid mode here. Switching to grid mode by itself is not always enough because right now our counter is in um, minutes and seconds mode, so the grid, if we could see it, would be minutes and seconds. And that's not going to help us. We need musical grid. So we're going to switch to bars and beats. And then our grid resolution, this little guy here, we're going to click on the little triangle, needs to be the same as our quantize. So we can move things around freely and they'll snap to our grid. We might turn that off for notes that are an exception. But for now, um, everybody's pretty much going to be this uh, triplet 16th. So I'm going to, I'm going to select that. All right, I can't see the grid though. It's underneath somewhere. And um, one way to make make the grid visible is to create a MIDI track, just an empty MIDI track below your current track. So I'm gonna click on my current track and I'm gonna Apple Shift N or Control Shift N on Windows and select a yeah, MIDI track and hit OK. And now I can see the grid. You can see it's right below me and this, this is a nice uh, triplet grid even. Okay, so we have trouble right from the very beginning. Let's take a listen. 
So we got some sort of anticipated thing going on here, and we can even see it. This warp marker is on the 16th right before the downbeat, and really that should be on the downbeat. So now let's listen. All right, I feel better about that. Let's check out the next phrase. Oops, here we go. Oh, we were, we were good. First couple phrases up, up until about here, something bad happened. Now, if you're keeping an eye on things while you go, which I would recommend, you can see that we've got a, a spacing pattern going. And since we're going to be, this is a repeating pattern throughout the song, we should be able to easily, easily spot places that are not in sync. Looking at our drum track up above, see that kick drum marks this first spot, and then we've got a big space, little space, big space, little space, big space, big space. So, in fact, we got trouble right here. We need to add an analysis marker or a warp marker right there. I'm going to click down low on the thing here and snap that on the beat. All right, better. And so we've got the same pattern again. Little, big, little, big, little, big, big. And then the next one, we've got some sort of little noise in there, but that doesn't look like music, really. We've got little, big, little, big, little, uh-oh, not big enough. But this is probably what we're hearing, the trouble right here. Let's listen to that section. All right, fixed. Get to the next part. This definitely sound, sounded rushed. We had trouble there. And um, looks like everybody's just early. So I'm going to select the everybody and move everybody over. All right. To make this easier, I'm going to turn pre-roll on so I can keep a selection like this and have Pro Tools play before and a little after this segment. I'm going to bring up the transport window and make pre-roll some nice little amount, like one bar pre-roll and 99 bars post-roll. And that way, when I play, I can keep this selection. I won't lose this selection to go click over here somewhere, like I just did. And now I can just hit play. All right, pretty cool. Looks like we got trouble on that next riff as well. So it looks like it should be, you know, skinny big. I hate to say skinny big, but, you know, it's like... What is that? Two sixteenth triplets and then four sixteenth triplets. So let's make it two sixteenth triplets and then four sixteenth triplets and listen to what this sounds like. All right, now some of you may be saying, I'm not having fun right now. No, this isn't fun. I wish it was fun, but this is just what happens when you got a mushy guitar amp sound without, without a lot of transients and a pretty sloppy player. So it's a little bit of work. But think of it this way. If this is the best take you could get out of them, which in this case it was, these two takes were actually comped together from quite a few other takes, that's um, it's either time to get a new guitar player, which can be no fun. You know, you got the band sitting there. They're looking at you to fix their problems. Put out an inferior product, which, you know, some people would say they need to learn their lesson. But I would say, hey, I've got the tools to fix it. And um, charge them by the hour. They're happy if I fix it. I'm happy about the hourly thing. So it's a win-win situation. This analysis marker right here is uh, crowding this section. So I'm going to delete it and see what happens. See, if, see what this sounds like. Yeah, just let the natural little palm mute that happened there happen. All right, we could clean this up some more. It looks like there's more trouble here, but it's going to be more of the same. We're looking for our pattern to emerge. And we'll either delete analysis markers or move them onto the down beats, the beats where they need to be up above. Let's just do the other track while we're here. Go ahead and um, select the other track. And you can imagine that I'm going to do the rest of the song after you leave. Select all, bring up quantize window, apply, and view the warp markers because we probably are pretty sure there's going to be trouble. Now, once you've done one track, it's a lot easier to do the subsequent tracks. And this is this is really great. So now I can see, since these parts are supposed to be the same, it's a doubled the same part, I really should see the same patterns happening. And if I'm not, um, I need to listen to these, but almost without listening, I could nudge them onto the beat. But let's go ahead and listen. Here we go. All right, you can hear he rushed right there. That's the first one that needs to be moved over. All right, more trouble here. Same thing. You can see it doesn't match the pattern up above. And oh, we've got all sorts of trouble here. Looks like we got an extra beat by the guitar player because you can see there are two waveforms there, but let's listen. All 
Yeah, he's out of control. We could delete one of these. Let's try that. Let's delete one. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Let's keep cleaning up his mess. Clean up your mess, buddy. And um, this is where, if you have more talent than, than I do during this session, you can tell jokes during this part. So the guitar player that's leaning over your shoulder getting corrected in uh, this virtually soloed mode here um, is distracted from what's going on. He's not quite as nervous as he would be normally. Okay, let's listen. What's that? Oh, I did the wrong thing. I didn't make a match like I should have. All right, we're almost there, right? Starting to sound like one player playing together. I'm going to do more uh, visual matching just to get us in the ballpark here. Deleting markers that are just kind of in nowhere or where I'm just going to trust the player to have done a decent job of that, like that palm mute that's the end of that section there. I'm going to trust him. And the rest of that we're going to leave as a mess right now just so we can hear from the beginning and see if we've done our job. Listening. All right, we made it a lot better. It's a lot tighter. It's so tight now that the bass player doesn't sound all that tight anymore. So real quick. Now he's a synth, and he's got nice, clean transients, so this is going to go like butter. Bring up our quantized window, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. All right, see, that went like butter. It sounded really good. There we go.